Well, hello and welcome to this little tutorial about how to make an articulated body of a dragon or snake or whatever you want. So generally when I start making a dragon I start with the head first but the head is very individual from dragon to dragon and whatever you like you can make but what I start with is to make a body scale so I usually start with an ha a half spear sphere wow I can't talk sphere and work my way from there so I start with this half sphere and I edit the shape a bit you can by all these points you can edit the shape of uh, the design or the scale of the height that you want. Um, but yeah, I, I generally try and make a shape that I like and then continue editing out from that. Usually I start with these two scales and then work with those depending on what I want to do. So I just sort of feel my way around a shape that I want the scales to be in, or the body scales, and see what I like. I'm just going to set my grid down to the lowest so it snaps better to it. Now let's see. I just used the arrow keys. See, we need this one up a bit. Uh, you can mark both scales by uh, just dragging your mouse over it and then editing it. See, I generally like this shape, but I just want it to be a bit more up floating in the air now. Here, if you look underneath your grid here, you can see what is not going to be in the print and what is above the surface you're working on. You need to cut this off and I simply just do that by taking this box here as a whole and making sure it's big enough for the area that I want cut off and then I take this black arrow here and I drag it down and since I know this is a 20 by 20 box I just say minus 20 and enter and then I know it's going to snap down to the work plane nice and easy so now I'm going to mark the box and hold in shift and mark both scales and then I'm going to group all three things together and there I basically have the main shape of a scale now but now you're thinking well it's not hollow and you can't exactly have a moving part in here but now I'm going to do this I'm going to control C and control V so I get a copy of this and this one copy I'm going to make hollow and by holding down shift and one of these corners you can scale your model so it keeps its proportions so it will be smaller than the one you already have and then you can take this one and just move it up a bit and now I can actually move it inside the scale and hollow out my body scale here let's see now I want this center so I'm going to drag the mouse all with the left mouse button down and just mark them all and then I'm going to use this tool called align and these little dots will align them to whichever part you choose but I'm just going to have them aligned for the middle part here there we go So now it's actually looking quite good then I'm going to mark them all again and I'm going to group them together and now I have a hollow out scale like this 
And if you see here, I'm just going to copy it again. Now you can see if I make this one hollow, you can actually see that this one will fit inside the other one. And you can see that it's actually not hitting until now. So they would actually fit quite well together, these two. You see, the grayed out area here is where they hit each other. So if they hit, it's going to actually print it as two solids like this. This would mean it would fuse these two parts together. But if you just move this little bit back like that and have this solid, then they won't actually touch e each other. And then you can actually print in place like this. But now we have to make a hole for for the movement. And I'm just going to take the cylinder form here. And I'm going to give it as smooth sides as possible. And then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to make it quite small. And now I have this little fella here. And then I can go in and this square up here, you can just drag that up and then it will make it longer or shorter. And now I'm going to place this inside here because this is going to be the inside peg inside the scale that the hole here is going to move into. And now when this is done, I'm just going to make this hollow and I'm going to check and see how this is placed. I want it to be almost at the edge out here so it has as much, as much movement as possible. And I'm just going to make it a bit taller. You can see here if I zoom in that the grayed out part here is what's inside the other part of the model and the same up here. And these need to be touching each other so it's going to be one solid shape like that. So now I'm going to mark them again. I'm going to align them so I'm sure that they are in the center. And I'm going to take this pack and I'm going to copy it via Control C and Control V and set it in here again. And then I am going to make a hole in the other end and I'm just thinking I'm going to make it an oval shape this time. So we have a bit, I, this hole in this part always needs to be a bit bigger than this one. And the more hole you have, the more movement you actually have of, of the scale and the body. So now you take this and you move it inside your model here. I think it needs to be just a little bit wider here, like that. And now I'm going to mark this one and hold shift down and mark the body and I am going to align these two also so they are centered like that and I'm going to mark the same ones again and I'm going to group them and we now have a hole for the peg to move in and we have a full body scale and now what I do is I take this hole thing and I group it so it stays together because when you start moving these scales around you're going to need them to be grouped so you don't move half of the scale and not the inside peg and st stuff like that. But now we can take this and we can copy it and paste one in and you can actually make this hollowed out and then you can move it inside here so you can actually see if it's inside the way it should be. Now if it's not the way it should be, let's move it in here, then you will be able to see these grayed out areas again. Now this is touching the other model and these scales need to be apart. So we just via the arrow keys move it out and there. And then I do the opposite just to check and see that it's not touching this area either and we are quite clear of 
the other scale here. So now I can make this solid again. So now we actually have two scales moving inside one another and they can be printed in place. And that is basically how you make a scale for a print in place dragon or snake or whatever kind of moving model you want. You can also, if you want to, have them... Uh, I usually make my uh, shapes so they utilize the whole work plane here. So you can take these and you can actually turn them in inside each other. So you have a angle of, let's say, 10 degrees. You just take this one and hold the mouse button down on it and then you can use your scales here and move it and I would make it hollow again and then just move it until I can see that we are clear and if you you do this you need to make sure that it's not touching this wall over here and it's not touching the inside pack in in this one but yeah now we have a scale at a 15 degrees angle and then you can just copy paste and do that until you have the whole body you can also resize the scale so you want them bigger or smaller you can make this one for example we can make this a bit smaller so I'll just hold shift down and this one and then I'll rescale it a bit so it gets a bit smaller and then you can see it's touching now so I just rearranged where it was and how it's looking there and now you have a smaller scale if you wanted to make the tail or you wanted to make a body up here or whatever you want but yeah this is a quick little tutorial of how I do my scales on my dragons articulated dragons and stuff like that I hope you like this little tutorial and yeah, see you another time. Bye!